What's going on, everybody out there? I am Soul Expression. We are co-founders of Ufulu Child and your Freedom Lifestyle Coaches. I want to thank you so, so very much for tuning in today to this episode of Get Your Mind Right. Now, on this episode, we have the distinct pleasure of speaking with the super wonderful Sonia Barrett. Please say hi to the peeps. Uh-huh. Hello, they're so funny. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Miss um, Bear, Miss Baird or Sonia? Sonia, Sonia. Okay. Yeah. Just asking, you know, just, you know. Nah. You know yeah, no, Miss Barrett. Miss Barrett, please. No, it's Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> Sonia is the award-winning produ- executive producer of The Business of Disease, a documentary highlighting just that, The Business of Disease, amongst other things. Uh, the host and producer of the show The Expansion Zone on KPFK 90.7 FM in Los Angeles, California, and she also posts episodes on YouTube, so check that out as soon as you can. Uh, she's the author of a few things, uh, The Holographic Canvas, Fusing Mind and Matter, a journey of possibilities and health and the seven seven day program excuse me uh she's a well sought out after speaker and teacher and coach on the natural science of the path inward and we're so honored to have you on with us to discuss many 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 things amongst those things Mm -hmm. the mind body spirit connection money and the desired experiences of you know us modern human beings Mm -hmm. and before diving into all of that juicy stuff, all right. mm-hmm. I just want to take a second to encourage everybody out there in the world to share this interview, to share this video, uh, invite your friends to come and watch it with you. You do not want to miss what this wonderful being of light has to share with us. She's always dropping, just gems. dropping all the gems. All the gems <laughs> you drop. So much jewelry in these oh. words. <laughs> so uh, oh. so uh, let's dive right in. You ready? <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So my first question is, I understand that you got your spiritual wake up call, you could say, Mm -hmm. uh, as you sometimes say, by accident, Mm -hmm. after you and your children left Mm -hmm. uh, an unhealthy, abusive kind of situation and started over, just like started from scratch, Mm -hmm. uh, literally from scratch. And and you Mm -hmm. can give us some some details about that if you like. Can you Mm -hmm. tell us what your origin is? in this expansion of your own consciousness, this expansion zone of your own consciousness was like, and what happened that made it so clear for you that the world we think we live in is not really all there is to it? Well, okay, so, okay, let me always um, say that I did have a lot of questions from the moment I got here on the planet. So. So I think I I had a foundation because I was curious to begin with, and I grew up in the church like pretty much most folks, Um, but the questions still weren't being answered in my mind. But um, And even in the teenage years, I I was very interested in, um, you know, science fiction, you know, time travel, Edgar Cayce stuff you know, the Bermuda Triangle. I mean, so I was always really curious about all of that. And I think at one point I kind of freaked myself out. (laughs) So I kind of left it all alone. I was like, whoa, okay, this is getting too real. So then I didn't really get back into um, looking at it. And I didn't even connect the two at the time. I didn't connect the two in the sense of my questioning later on, um, like in 92, uh, in comparison to when I was a, a teenager or, or, or a child. Mm-hmm. But but later on, I started to see the trail of all of this. So, um, so yes, I went through a divorce, and um, it was a very intense situation. I, it, I was in an abusive um, marriage for uh, a number of years, for like mm-hmm. you know, 14 years. We had been together for that long, and... Um, And one day I ran away. One day I literally ran away Hmm. with my sons and we slept in the car um, for almost two weeks because I didn't have access to money or anything. And, um, and, you know, that's that's a whole other thing. We keep saying, you know, we got to write the script on that because it was really interesting, the whole process. Um, but anyway, so um, we eventually, you know, we, we landed in a, a place and all of that. 
but it was in those moments then that I decided, what in the hell was that all about? <laughs> what was what that right? Yeah, like, what, what was, was I doing right? to myself? What yeah. was going on? So I, I then I, I, I started um, digging. I mean, I, when I say digging, I, I always tell people I, I read like maybe three, three books. I had Shirley MacLaine's Out on a Limb, Dancing in the Light, um, Masters of the Far East, I yes. the Bible. And, and again, I'm like, okay, let me see if I missed anything in the Bible. And, um, and so, it, you know, after I did that for a little while, then I put everything away and I had decided that I knew that there was a way to know more without anything at all, any books. And I have to say, you know, yeah, talk, we talk about religion and we talk about, you know, how it does handicap people at yeah. the same time. But one of the things I must say in that moment when I did look at the Bible again, the thing that really pushed, helped to push me was I'm like, okay, so this whole idea that Jesus, this figure, did all of these things, and then it says greater works than these shall ye do. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, if somebody existed that did this stuff, I can't see why I can't do it. That was really exactly. my thinking. I'm like, I just don't see why I can't do it. So that's when I said, okay, I'm going to figure this out. And then I didn't know how to meditate. I didn't know anything about metaphysics. Um, I didn't know anything for certain about quantum physics or any of that. I didn't know that there were other people thinking this way. I didn't know about workshops. I had never been inside a site, you know, one of the metaphysical shops or a psych, mm -hmm. none of that stuff. So I, I started to, um, yeah, to try to meditate, and one day um, I I just had this profound experience, and because I didn't know what you know what am I doing, what am I trying to do, I didn't even know. I mean, I knew, but I didn't know if anything was supposed to happen. And Makes so, sense. Yeah, one day I had this um this this profound experience that um just you know made me like a kid in a candy store, and I just kept needing to try to bring myself back to this incredible experience that I had where I could now feel or, or in to some degree see, when I say see, it's more of an insight, it, it, more insightful um, mm -hmm. sight um, of the backdrop of what we would call the system or the matrix or, or the game or, you know, any of that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I just, every day I went, you know, at it every day diligently, you know, for like, 10 years of just straight of just being consistent on doing this every day, every day, every day. Mm -hmm. And every day it, I just got stronger in, um, in my ability to access information to, you know, do anyway, all, all of these, these things and these experiences. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just kind of went, went from there and eventually, uh, years later, in 2007, I decided to finish the book that I didn't know was going to be a book. I was just writing, and then eventually I thought, oh, well, maybe it's, I have a book. So a lot of changes yeah. took place in that writing um, at that point. A lot of evolution happened throughout the years. So things I wrote earlier, um, I had now grown. So now I moved into this other space of understanding, and that information then was solid enough um, is my real understanding or realization as to what happened where it became more of a, a uh, foundation. So it wasn't that it was going to be changed, okay. but it was a launch pad. And so that's how the holographic canvas was um, ultimately written. And um, yeah, and I just want to say to people, you know, with kids now, my, my kids, as they will tell you, I did a, a all along as I was doing what I was doing and discovering I was sharing with them. They were younger, but I was sharing, um, you know, with them every step of, of the way. So, yeah, so now we can, we can have conversations about this and it's not weird. And they're, they're my sons and my buddies at the same time. So we can have like, you know, all kinds of profound, yeah. open conversations. Um, and they can, and they can talk on Facebook now about this kind of stuff. <laughs> and there's whole yeah. groups and yeah. whole yeah. Culture, right dedicated to this stuff Just, from people uh, around the globe oh, you know absolutely. people that grew up hindu talk about this people that grew right. up Buddhist, people that grew yeah. up yeah that was yeah christian, christian. Yeah. yeah 
it's like yeah and every one of them have their have unique aspects of of a truth and um and so it's good to be able to have a wide perspective and and when you trust yourself you start to uh you don't have to worry about somebody imposing on you you can take something there's always something you're learning something that you can yes. add so i don't get like you know oh my god you using the word god you know i i know people that get yeah. really bent um but it's like you get into this other space where you realize this is a massive incredible game you know called earth life and yeah. um and then you just start to find your balance and then you can see you can observe because you're not so in opposition to anything because you feel solid in your footing and that's yeah. basically what you know what my work is about is wanting people to come into their own into their own strength and know that they have that it's their birthright to question and to know and to you know tap into indeed indeed well thank you for that uh to piggyback off of that a little bit um you reminded me just now when you said you know you can we can kind of relax with our hang-ups on oh his name wasn't jesus it started with a y and oh, his, oh the, yeah 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 you know and and um we used to speak with emotion and not words and all these right. words is what made us fall from grace and all these ideas yeah. right we dive deep by the way we dive deep on our show so yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah, really glad to have. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can, you can, you know. Oh, yeah. and, and speaking of that, I hear you mention, you know, like seeing, but seeing more so with insight. Um, mm -hmm. uh, in terms like the background of the matrix or the back, you know, the the what's behind the veil, basically. Mm -hmm. What is your kind of you know understanding of that, and what can we do as a collective, as human beings? to be more in tune with with that seeing with that real seeing you could say well you know one of the first things i mean this is always my answer um when somebody says what can we do i always say you've got to first you've got to come to the table uh open you've got to come to the table committed you have to come to the table curious and you have to come to the table once again um, where you're allowing your perception to be widened. If you come to the to to uh, the table of wanting to understand more and to be more spiritual and to be conscious, all that stuff people say, and then you go, okay, but creation can only be like these things, and then you you you've got this narrow approach and perspective, and you try to put creation in a box where it feels so much more comfortable for you and now you're knowledgeable and all of this and it's just stuck in a box that's not going to you're not going to see mm -hmm. um you're not going to see as 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 far as is possible and the fact of the matter is that there really is nobody holding anything from us so that's you know that's what i came to understand yeah. nobody's doing anything to us i mean if anything we we are the ones restricting ourselves and so the relationship that we end up having with people and conditions that seem to imprison us or hold things from us is going to be based on the the limitation of our perception to begin with and our belief system so the, the your environment is going to respond um to you in in a like manner yeah. so what i started to realize is that um that that it creation is being what it is or what it how it appears to me in every moment according to the level of understanding and awareness that i hold it's mm -hmm. not that creation is only this thing right now but according to my level of consciousness and understanding that's how i'm seeing that's the angle of possibilities that i'm seeing but mm -hmm. as i let go and dive deeper in I'm going to see other aspects of possibilities. And I think that's the thing that people have to understand is even scientists, you know, we see that with science. You know, scientists always change their minds. I don't care if it's 50 years from now, 100 years from now, 10 years from now, there's always a perception or a perspective that a scientist has. And if you notice, then it changes. It's either somebody comes yes. along and yeah, and, and says, okay, well, you were correct to a point, 
but here is more information. Right, there's this part that you may have missed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, th so this is the journey all along. But when you get locked in and you're like, no, this is ultimately, it, this is the only way, then that is the only way for you. That mm. is all you can see. Because people are very, um, um, what's the word? They, um, oh, I'm thinking of a word right now, but, but they contradict themselves a lot. Mm -hmm. yes. God is everything. That's the one that always gets me. God is everything. <laughs> or somebody says, all we have are possibilities. And then you say something, and then they go, oh, no, they narrow it down. But I thought you said all that exists are right. right. <laughs> and that God is everything. Then if God is everything, you know, by definition of whether you use God or creator or mm -hmm, whatever, mm -hmm. um, then, then, then how can you then say that, no, that is not possible. But then you just said God is everything. Or you that, know, actually. It's, it's the ocean of possibilities and yeah you know you're 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 um you're making me think of a story that you told in uh your work where you did an experiment with life to just see uh, i guess many many of these things but one of them you highlighted you did an experiment where you took a card to the grocery store or the corner store or some store and you knew the card was going to be declined Oh, and you must you have did been something. a while back. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's back. from like wow, yeah. but, you, but you did something mm -hmm. in your awareness, I guess, to, to just mm -hmm. be real broad about it. Mm -hmm. And you you the card was declined. You started laughing. Then the, the same card mm -hmm. paid for the food or paid for the groceries or whatever you were. Can can you um because that's this is this is this is kind of where I want to go with the talking about money and, and our desires and stuff. So could you could you start us off with this um, this uh, deepness here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you probably didn't hear the one, um, the, I, I don't know, there might be an excerpt on YouTube, um, the, the experiment that I actually did, the bigger experiment with money okay. that I actually did with myself. Uh, well, money is an interesting thing because it really, it's a catalyst. And I think more people start to realize that it is truly a catalyst. So it's, we think that we're using money, uh, we're working our jobs, you know, because we want to get money and all of that, but it's really the experience of, of the place that you're in, the environment. That's really what we're doing in every condition. It's really the story and, and money just happened to, um, as the catalyst, show up, yeah. right? You have it in the amounts that is required for the story that's being run. Now, mm -hmm. money said to me years ago, I remember money said to me, the energy of money said to me, I am always available. I am always here, but I show up according to your story. Mm -hmm. And that stuck with me. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, what? because Right. It's like you can't, okay, you're not going to have what we define as a lot of money if your story is all about your oppression and you being victimized and how no matter what you do, you, you know, you can't get ahead. And, you know, depending on what the story is, so money has to keep supporting your story. So, mm -hmm. yes, it shows up. Um, whether it's through your job or whatever, it's, it has to show up according to the magician's request. And that's something that I started to learn. So I started to think, well, what is my story? When things weren't going the way I needed to financially, I'm like, okay, well, what's the story that is right now in front of me that I am running, that money is, is, is uh, responding according to the story. So that's what I, what I teach in workshops is to look, what is the story right now? When the thing you want is not coming about, what is the story right now that you're running? And I think that that for, for everybody becomes fascinating because you don't notice and you're sending out a command. You're creating a law in your world yes. that no matter what I do, nothing changes. I can't get ahead. That's a law. That's a law for you because you've said that, that no matter what, things don't change. It remains the same. 
So that means that your entire environment and your entire experiences and relationships with the world and with your job and with people and with family will always have to um, adhere to the law that you've created in your reality. And so since I experiment with myself, um, I have learned, I've seen that in many situations. And yes, and with, with that situation with the card, yes, um, I used it and I, I had done it other times. But mm -hmm. the perspective that I came at this with at that time um, was that when I go to the store, when I buy anything, that it's not, I'm not giving the money away because that's the program that we have is like when we yeah. buy something, that it's it's something that it's gone. That money right. is, is gone. But if indeed everything is everything and this this cashier and everybody that I'm dealing with is really an aspect of me and everything is really just my hologram. That was a perspective I was coming from. So when I was paying for something, I was still giving it back to myself. <laughs> that was, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, that's how I was looking. I was like, okay, well, when I spend, I'm giving this back to myself as opposed to, Oh my God, you know, I just spent right. dollars and it's like, it's gone. Well, no, they actually just went back to me because really, is there anybody out there? Is there any anything like that? The so my question. mind is so bizarre. My mind is like so out there, but it's how I experiment. It's how I test what we uh, what appears to be boundaries is by changing my perception of things and then see how that works for me. And I think that's what everybody has to do. If you are listening to this and you go, "Yeah, that sounds good, Sonia," but Man, I've tried some of that before and it didn't work. Okay. You have to look at where the truth of your subconscious mind and your beliefs to begin with. You mm -hmm. cannot change anything if you do not tell the truth to yourself. You mm -hmm. have to be honest with yourself. That's why in the movie The Matrix, Know Thyself, mm -hmm. that part is so crucial because all the programs that, that are running your life is based on all the programs that are running somewhere in there. So if you don't acknowledge these programs, then you're going to have lip service. Oh yeah, I'm just, you know, positive. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But then it doesn't really work because you don't really believe any of what you're saying deep down. That's not your truth. So that's why we have to see what is our truth in this <laughs> moment. What really is our truth? then we can make headway. And so those are the things that, um, that I discovered. And then a uh, few years ago, I did um, an experiment on the website. It's called the Ultimate Game Changer um, one. Can you, can you say the website really quick for, the, for everybody? Oh, my website is therealsoniabarrett.com. Thank you. And I, um, I, did a work I did a workshop after I had done this experiment with myself, which lasted almost a year of the most grueling experience ever. Um, and so okay. <laughs> let's go put extra sprinkle grueling. Oh my gosh. It, <laughs> was like, know. Woo, yeah. it was like grueling. Okay. So okay. I got taught. What happened is I got tired of, um, of money being so prominently, you know, in charge in your mind, in my mind. Um, I didn't want money to be like the reason for like anything that I was doing. Um, I just, I just, I just got tired of it being a feature. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I thought to myself, there has to be a way there has to be, if everything is everything and it's all, you know, energy and it's all uh, a, a paradox of real mm -hmm. and not real and all of this stuff, then there has to be a way. So I had stopped doing workshops at the time. I stopped doing everything. Like I, I decided I was going to do nothing for money. I was going to do nothing <laughs> that in my mind would produce money mm. and test if, if money will, would show up anyway. Uh, you know, if I did nothing, if I could cross this threshold, 
and it was definitely interesting. I had gone down to uh, uh, 25 cents, like in my account. So what I would do then is I decided to not look at the, I stopped checking my account. I go, you know what? The more you check your account is the more you're perpetuating this lack. The, so, pro, so the program, like, right? Yeah, yeah. I am expecting there to, to not, not be none. Yeah, exactly. So, so I go, that's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to stop checking your bank account. You're just going to stop it. So I did. And understand this. Now, um, I was, you know, married when I was doing this and my husband did not know that I was doing this. So, so okay. that has <laughs> this whole other element because I have things that I am responsible for that I must take care of that I, on my end, I do end my business and all of that. So, um, I decided to, to go ahead and to do this. So gradually I'm in this thing. Now I'm getting, this is like overdue, mm -hmm. you know, my, 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 my phone, you have no money to pay it technically, according to the game, according to the mm -hmm. simulation, mm -hmm. um, it says you can, um, I'm like overdue on my water and the electricity. Um, now it's like a thousand dollars. So uh, all these things are happening. My car payment, just, you know, I'm like, so you're like, what am I doing? What are you doing? So, so you start going into that space. Like, what am I doing? Right. I can't, then I can't tell anybody what I'm doing. Right. I have one friend that I told <sighs> He, he's a good friend and he was like understanding that what I was yeah. doing is always and, the one friend. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, Oh my gosh. Okay. And then I'd have to get gather myself. I'm like, no, 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 you're not going to say, what are you doing? It, so then I had to go into, this is not real. I had to go right. into all the truth of looking at everything that these are my game tools my car i'm driving down the street in the car i know i need to make my car payment i'm like what car i was like that's not even real so i had to take mm. my car into this completely different space of breaking everything down to nothing right and okay. so to to the fact that it really wasn't but in this space of this game everything is crystallized. This is a solid experience that we're, that we're having and, you know, everything you can touch it, you know, all yes. of this, it's like, Oh, I got to pay my utility bills. And then I started to realize, I was like, wait a second. Huh? So the water company is working for me on my behalf with this game, with the story. And that's their job to tell me these things because then it solidifies the fact as to how real they are by saying, okay, if you don't pay, you're gonna get, it's gonna get cut off. And so I started to realize that more than anything else, what we feared was the consequences, the consequences that money, the idea of money seemed to represent. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Cut a long story short, because there's so much that happened in there. So many moments. I mean, of, I'm gonna have to edge of my seat now. Yeah, I'm, you know? So many moments of bawling, <laughs> you know, oh. of crying, of sitting, squatting down in the shower, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" And right two seconds after, I go, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "What are you crying about? This stuff isn't even real." You know, so it was like it was like a crazy person in my mind. It's like you gotta be my, at least ten percent. Yeah, emotional <laughs> part, my physical. That part that belongs in the game wants to go, well, what are you doing? This is crazy. And then the other part is like, what's crazy? This is, you're not doing anything. There's nothing to do. So anyway, so that went on for a mm -hmm. while. And ultimately, as I started to write over some of these things, okay, one, I was like, okay, what do I do? Do I call the, the water electric company? What, what, what do I do? So I, I was listening and it was like, okay, oh, call. So when I called, there's a recording that says, due to whatever it is they're doing, we will not be uh, uh, disconnecting anybody's water, electricity, or anything. It was just bizarre things that would happen. Wait, it's wait, like, wait. So, wait a minute. Hold yeah. on. Let me, just, let me just, hold on. So, you you call them, you finally call them mm -hmm. after, you know, I guess this this battle of, this stuff, what am I doing? I'm doing bad things. And then the other one, no, you're not doing anything. You never have. Like you don't spirit. exist. <laughs> and, and this, so after, so after a while, you listen in and said, well, just make the call. 
and you make the call and you get a recording that says we're not going to there is no consequence <laughs> we're not going to disconnect anything at the time <laughs> i was like okay then with my phone, <laughs> with my phone um because uh, i'm listening now. i'm like okay um if i get a feeling it's like okay call now so then i call the the phone um company and then they said um actually um you have a credit we had sent something out to let you know about your credit and a bill was like 300 and something dollars and the credit just happened to be 300 and something dollars it's like well you don't owe anything i was like okay then i went and i looked at this paper this envelope from them that had come and i opened it and then it said that and I, i'm like all right so it was it was the series of things that were happening and uh you know and you know at one point with my car it was like okay well you know should i what do i do should i hide my car and something was like no no because if you do you're going back you're giving reality back the game. to them right yeah exactly you are not you are going so i did and then i just relaxed and I, so it was a gradual relaxing it was a gradual relaxing again this went on for months Mm -hmm. And, um, mm. and, and so ultimately, um, I had gotten to a point where, um, I could, I was laughing about it because I, my husband's probably wondering, it's like, I wasn't going out and buying food and coming back and shopping. As a matter of fact, I didn't have stuff I wanted to snack on, you know, I like to snack and I wasn't yeah. spending and I could, you know, but he didn't know. I mean, of course now he knows it's like, you know, why later? <laughs> He knows, and then he would come home, and he'd say things, and he's a bill person. He likes to check the bills and stuff, and all of that. So he is saying things like um, he's saying things in it as part of my being so, uh, being solid in where I was. So he would say things where normally I probably would have been like, "Oh, I'm ready to say to get defensive," but it was like no. So then I could I didn't now. I must say this part though. Okay. I had committed myself so much to doing this thing and to to just be okay no matter what to do it. I, even if the roof caved in. That even yes, I with my marriage, which I knew it would be fine, but I had to come to that place where I was like, okay, no matter what, you don't turn back. No matter what. Okay, well, geez, you could end in divorce. I'm like, okay, but I'm not turning back. I'm not turning back. Okay, yeah. None of that happened, but but I had to come up against all the fears that are going to run to get you to come back in the network, right? So, um, so that I just had to follow through. Now, after I made it through, and now it was more humorous to me because when I realized it was more that we we're afraid of the consequences. That's when I look like a crazy person because I was just laughing to myself. Like now I had let go. Now I had no fear of falling. I had no fear. Like if anything that happened, if the roof fell in, I was like, okay with anything now. I was just okay. Like whatever now. I was good with it. And once I crossed that bridge, then one day, about eight or nine months later, I get an email from somebody that says, they're coming in from out of the country and they would like to talk to me about a, something that they needed me to do, a project to work on. And um, I was like, okay. So right. I, the person came, I met with them. And to my surprise, they told me what the project was and they said, how much will you need to get started? And the old part of you, which all of us, we would be like, Oh gosh, well, I got to make sure I don't want to make it too high. I don't want to make it too low. You know, you start getting, I had none of that. Mm. I was so completely not bothered anymore. And right. so not ruled by You better me. not be bothered after all of that. No, I, wasn't. <laughs> I didn't even care. So I said, Indeed. you know, at that time I said, I said 25,000 and, um, and they said, okay. So I went, I, and, he said, and so they said, okay, so just when you go back, you know, send me your bank account information and uh, we'll wire it tomorrow. I was like, okay. So I went back home and I thought, you know, I think I would like an extra 5000 
So I did. I said, actually, make that 30. <laughs> so that's what I did. Wow. And yes, it was like, no problem. And so I, I had gone from that moment of this, whatever I was dealing with, and then, then like, and then I had like $30,000. Like and then, that? yeah, and then, and so then, it, it, you know, so then that's how that uh, unfolded. And then, then right follow that, like, like a couple of weeks later, then I had like got an extra 15,000 um, from something else. And it, so it, it just kind of happened uh, like that, but I had, you know, crossed this bridge. Um, so, so it was very interesting. Now I do want to throw in, I do want to say to people that, yes, um, you know, even though I crossed that bridge, let me tell you what can be easy to fall back into because you will go through a series of things to, to ensure, to determine whether that's cemented or not. Yeah. When we have money in our pockets, we tend to feel like we're on top of the world and you're invincible and you're so positive now and you, know, you are just a miracle worker and you're changing mm -hmm. things. All right, so what do we fear? When we have a little money and then it starts to dwindle down, it's like, uh-oh, you know, you got $10,000. Something's wrong with me. Well, I'm not doing it right. Yeah. Well, no, you're not even thinking that. You're not even oh. thinking that. You're more worried that you're going to run out. Like, yeah. you, you have $10,000 and, and you're cool now. Then it starts to drop. Then you're down to like 500. Oh, you are just stressed because you don't want to go back to that experience anymore so now you're worried so that's what i had to learn over the years is to uh, cross that this other bridge um that i noticed that you could get into you can feel good because you have this money but are you is this cemented now do you really get it so i had to go through a, a few years of series of of moments to eventually not worry about it anymore no to, to actually to just leave that space and yeah. and so because of that i only would focus on the things that i want to do i didn't i, I stopped focusing on in doing things not that i did before but i no longer did it because of like okay well money you'll get this much money from it not that there's anything right or wrong about it but i'm showing you how your mind works and so yeah you can think about money but you have to look at how you it's controlling your um thought process and you know that whole thing so i i had to learn that so if even if you feel like your cash flow is low right now like man if there is something that you had set out to do you're gonna write your book you're gonna do whatever it is mm -hmm. you need to know when you get to that place you need to know you know what I'm going to be okay. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know what, but all I know is what I need is there. So I'm just going to focus in on writing this because, and then you're into it and you're, you're the excitement of creating your projects that loosens it up. That's what makes it work. I didn't have any money to write, to do that documentary. I had never done a film. Where am I going to get all this money? I had no idea that it would cost that much, but, it was an idea and I'm like, I don't know, I'm just going to start. So then I started and then as I started, my, um, and, and then I had moments where it came to a stop and then that was okay. Um, and then I finished, you know, done enough of it where um, I, I remember one person had contact, uh, uh, contacted me at the time. I was making, you know, donations if you want to send. And one person had said, I put six, you know, six hundred on my on my card, and then that person called back, and they're like, "What are you gonna do with six hundred dollars? Put five thousand. Do run five thousand on the card, you know." So it was like that kind of thing, and then somebody came along and said, "You know what? I like what you're doing," um, you know, and and said, "Okay, I'm gonna give you the rest of this money." And it was several thousand dollars and it was like that. But the whole point is you start, you begin, you, you must begin. And most people um, tend to do it the opposite. Well, I'm just going to wait till I get this much money over here. And then I'm going to, you know, right. no, I'm going to wait for the permission from my environment yeah. to do what's something that's inside of me. 
that you says that I want to do. And it's yes, right. not the way you reminded me of a Tony Robbins quote. If you want to take the island, burn your boats, <laughs> you gotta burn your boat. Cause it's like, yeah, the, the trigger that I've run into in my own experiences or whatever, cause you, she, she, we'll tell you, we haven't been through our own little experiences. I, with, I uh, love it that you're doing you know, this together. I love with, it. Yeah. With facing, um, potential uh you know and we done lost apartments you know we done, we done oh, did the I, thing. I, i've been through the whole nine yeah months. you know my yeah, past did, did the thing. so I, I lived this game trust but me what, what triggered game. the uh the love really what you're talking about for the creation process and for not looking back and for not focusing on what you lost but mm -hmm. what you you know stand to gain or or, or just who you are basically mm -hmm. The cat, the 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 push mm -hmm. was the, you know what? I don't care if I die. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm doing, mm -hmm. which sounds extreme, right? But right, it's like right. it's okay, a commitment. it has it's, to be big. It it, be it's big. a big commitment. Oh. Like, like they say, what? Come hell or high water, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm doing, and this and and then it's doing. like buckle up, you know? Because <laughs> it's, it's going like, to be a bumpy ride. Well, buckle up. <laughs> You know, that's kind, of, yeah. that's kind of how I see it. You're right. And you, and you just get in. No one's watching you know, us. And there's the whole, the whole um, understanding that I, the I, what I call I, mm -hmm. is always changing. It, it, is, it doesn't mm -hmm. really exist as a constant. It's like a flame. We look at mm -hmm. a flame and we think it's a flame. Because right. We call it that. But it's no, it's gas that keeps getting ignited. Right. And, and it's then not the same unignited. flame either. The right. flame is not the same flame ever. <laughs> right. It's Every moment is a whole different set of molecules that were not exactly. there a second. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I so, love I love the you you guys your understanding and that and I, I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh. Because yeah, because this is what it requires. You know, this is what it requires. And some people aren't willing to do that work. Well, if we are magicians and masters, how are you going to know um, without knowing? You, you can't, you can just talk lip service all day or you can set out, you know, I mean, I, I get it. I mean, I produce a, a car for myself out of not knowing how I'm going to do this and, you know, just go, okay, this is what I'm doing. I need a car, I'm doing. I'm getting a car, I'm, I'm doing it. And a couple of days later, you know, how it all shows up and it's like the money is there and boom, you know, I go get um, what I, you know, what I want. So I don't, you know, and, and it's not that we're just talking about, things and this is what we have to understand is all the things that we have here are tools it's like you know you're playing a game and they they present opportunities to sharpen our skills and if we right. start looking at it like that there are opportunities to sharpen our abilities and the reason why we want to sharpen our abilities is because there is a vast experience beyond this limiting and limited perception of reality there is a a greater game and mm -hmm. you can't get into that greater expansive self if you are still over here tinkering you know with with just trying to make fire you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like I yeah a serial dabbler i sure <laughs> that's how we lost the apartments you know <laughs> And I'm a fire sign, so it's I was like, all in. I was like, okay, we're gonna oh, we gonna yeah. do manifestation. All right, let's do it. And let's I was all in. <laughs> and you no. know, and we, you know, since we was doing it together, is it is you know, we both oh, it's something else. It's something yeah. else. Yeah, you can't even explain it in a short yeah. interview. Well you're doing but, it okay, together. really quick, because I know you have something else uh planned mm -hmm. for today. The last little topic, well, it's a big topic, but we only got this much space. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the last uh little topic for lack of a better uh should bring us a little closer to home a little mm -hmm. closer to the game that most of us are playing mm -hmm. right and it and i wrote as the state of the world and in particular this country the united states seems to be steering down some dark roads mm -hmm. right for many of us mm -hmm. the racial tensions the planned demic as i mm -hmm. heard it called on instagram right, the planned right. demic, uh the political chaos all the whole nine right Mm -hmm. What do you feel we should really try to understand and, and what can we do, you know, to, to move forward, to, to, to progress instead of regress? Okay, one second. I was trying to find, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the article so I could tell you about it, but some weird thing is happening with my internet right now. 
Um, okay. Are you able to still hear me? Yep. Yeah. I can okay. Hear you. Yeah, that's really wild. Um, uh, but anyway, so you're saying in terms of all of this right now? Yeah, people... the, there's a lot going on. People are, you know, like I said, mm -hmm. on one front, we got the racial um, a lot tension of because of the police. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, that whole game. And then you got the, the Donald Trump and that whole game. And then you got the <laughs> pandemic or plandemic, mm -hmm. um, which to me, you know, it's, it's, it's planned, but, you know, whatever. Right, right. Um, yeah, but and that's the game. I mean, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it is. But that that is the game of it all. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that people um I'll try to find this before we we get uh get done here. Um but I think that people have to um come to a realization of their fears first of all and realize what is it that I fear? Because uh, right now it's about selling, marketing death, and mm -hmm. um, and fear, and people's core fear. Death is a core human fear, and that's the reason why it's being marketed like that. It's the best way to keep people in check and in control. So, um, so they need to first understand this, and in order to even begin to step back and have rational, some rational thinking and analyzing you know, uh, better analyzing what they're being told. And um, because in this particular pandemic, we are looking at the health of the body, the immune system, um, and basically the immune system, the immune right. support. One has to be honest with yourself. Are you taking care of your body? Are you taking care of your mind? You can't just run around either thinking, oh, my God, you know, everybody needs to do this because and you don't wear your mask, you're affecting other people. Well, the truth of it is, this is really about the immune support. Um, and, and if you're eating a bunch of stuff that's going to lower your immune system or you're stressing yourself out that's going to lower your immune system, then you're making yourself susceptible. And mm -hmm. I think that's the honest part about all of this. And if you are immune compromised, then then you need to really uh, then safeguard yourself. You know, uh, what are you doing to help to build your immune support? Either way. And I think we can see the logic of this simply because the system, when, when, when they talk about things on the news, they, nobody mentions what people should do to heal their bodies. No, nope. they say, you, yeah, they say, wear hands. Yeah, stay and inside, be lonely. <laughs> yeah, vaccine. Back. Wait for the vaccine. Wait for the vaccine. I don't think people are hearing this. Start to question. Hmm. Well, why is it they're not mentioning things that I could probably do to ensure my health? And if I did have uh, this really more ex what severe flu uh -huh. um what can i do to to support my body to heal faster and you also need to get outside and get sun you need to exercise are you doing any of these things and people need to just be honest with yourself don't just run around in fear that something right. could happen you have to take preventives and these are basic preventives what are you eating? If you're going and you're buying donuts and um, and and Coca Cola or whatever, um, right. and eating cookies, that's a sure way to just reduce that immune system because this right. is sugar. It's going to make you acid, and I think people just need to really understand how is the immune system being shot down. Don't just run around based on the fear that there that's being put out. You can. Mm -hmm have great impact on yourself and centering yourself centering bring yourself back to center that's really really important right we have to, we have to live from where we are not mm -hmm. from what we fear right and um i i i'm okay i'm getting on my other um my laptop because my desk found is it. letting me i just want to give the name of this article because many people found this article very, very um, helpful. Came, I wrote it, I don't know, in May or something like that. It's called yes. The Ushering In of a New Ordered World, um, A Time of Resets and Upgrades in the System. 
And this okay. is on your blog, on your website. It's correct? on the website, but you have to click on articles. And then okay. when you click on articles, go to where it says some of Sonia's articles. And it's okay. there. Or there's a search bar on the website, too. Okay. Um, but, and uh, once again, therealsoniabarrett.com for all of you out there. <laughs> yeah. So there's, um, yeah, there's a lot there. We're powerful people and powerful beings, and there's a lot that we can do. And that is the very reason why the system always has to ensure that people um, stay outside of their own power. Mm -hmm. um, it's easier to nap, um, to monitor and control and whatever the agenda is when mm -hmm. people are not in their power and when people give their power away, surrender their power. Like right now, they're surrendering their their um, their their freedoms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're they're just surrendering themselves. Private well, privacy is gone, but they're surrendering all of their power because the system has said, we will keep you safe. And that's what people are hanging on. If you do what we say, you're going to be safe. And we won't people no more. <laughs> yeah, well, people have a savior program. You know, we have a yes. safety program. We're always waiting to be saved by someone. So the system is delivering that whole savior idea. And that's why people are so compliant. And when you're not, they're, they're, they're sort of programmed uh, to turn on, on you instead of the system being able to police and control, things are done in a way, presented in a way, particularly through me these media platforms, so that people take over the responsibility of, um, of saying things to other people, uh, mm -hmm. of policing other people. And that is how incredibly brilliant this construct, the system is, and those that have been running this level of, of the matrix, the govern the governing matrix, the government right. matrix in the matrix, because they've been doing it for a very, very long time and they're just masters at it. So we have to figure out how do we um, initiate, you know, our own power, our own master self. So we're not at war with the system, but rather we begin to become more of a frequency that is um, overrides or goes beyond right. those lower frequency behaviors. Right, and is and is rooted mm -hmm. and foundationed in the self and not in the other. Uh, right. Well, you are and have been for such a long time a great example of how to live in your own power. Thank you so, so very much oh, thank uh, you for so being cool. here and for this wonderful conversation we were able to have. I feel really good. How do you feel? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is really great. <laughs> I love talking about this stuff, so I'm always excited to talk about it and to share it, especially with beings like you who get it and are really helping to put this information out to trigger memory in, in all of us, in all these, these people. I Indeed. love it. I love it. And thank you so much. What can we, uh, what can we expect from you in, 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 the upcoming, uh, in the upcomings, upcoming months, weeks, uh, whatever you got? Well, you know, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I'm not, I, mean, I have workshops that are going on, but um, these some of these workshops are not advertised because people have had to take some of these other workshops um, in order to okay. participate. Okay. But the website has, I recorded everything, like all workshops that I've ever done. So people can start at different stages mm -hmm. um, to gain, you know, certain levels of awareness and information. And I may be doing another workshop in reference to, maybe entrepreneurship or something. I've been thinking about putting something together like that. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it, but I think I would like to do something like that um, to help you know people in, in this particular moment, because this is where we are right now. Indeed. Maybe, Let us know when you do. I mean, Please. you're on yeah. your email list, so. Yeah, you know, great. You got a chance. Yeah. Your, Sonia's email list, get your life. Yes, get your Please. life. Oh, and oh. I, we do do the free, Reality Wednesday, every, the first Wednesday of every month, um, we we do that. It's free, and I, you know, I love doing it. And people get to talk, ask questions, share. And I do the expansion portal. That's a members um, uh, for members. Anybody wants to become a member, and we do we we chop it up about all kinds of edgy things and some of the mm -hmm. movies like Dark City. We break down, and there's just so much so much stuff that we we take apart and look at, 
you know. Indeed. So you love cinema, huh? You like you like. Oh my uh, god, I, I love movies. I love yeah. movies because the writers are inspired um, in ways that they don't even know how they're inspired, but they're presenting information that is um, necessary as part of the trigger, kind of like mm -hmm. Star Trek back in when it came out yeah. in the sixties. Yeah. And here, here we are, the old Star Trek and all these different versions of Star Trek. But it's all, it, you know, they're not just movies. They're, they're, send, they're saying something. They're sending, saying a message, giving a message. And, um, and we do need to, to come into a state of awareness, a deeper level of awareness, because technology is changing. And we need to understand the technology of the body and the mind and how this is all working. Um, because that's... We're, we're going into something bigger. So people were in about 5G, they're on to 6G, and yeah. it's, it's not going to stop. So this is about you and what you're doing and the frequency of your own body and your own mind. Um, and use use the idea of technology and this, this um, situation right now as your propulsion, as your momentum to go deeper into yourself. Indeed. Indeed. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. talk to you very soon. I will uh, be in your DMs again for a little closing, you know, I guess. Yeah. And um, well, I want to take a moment to thank everyone that took an opportunity to listen, to bask in this moment. Honoring yourself is important. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Sonia, for taking the time to even be here. Um, give Always thanks. A thank you. Thank you. Have thanks a wonderful as well yes yes thank you to the audience have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day and uh peace and love smaller it probably really is get up get up everybody move, move.